Thank you for stopping by maintaining 18. The image shown is the underside of an industrial table. Two of these tables were purchased for $10. Now the table has a new home. It does not fit the decor. How to transform from the industrial look to a modern workspace. At present, the table is being primed. This is one of the steps necessary to add epoxy. Why epoxy? Check out this commercial. Have you guys seen what you can do with stone coat epoxy? You can renew your old countertops, tables, desktops, and more. Guys, visit us at stonecoatcountertops.com and learn how to transform your old laminate into marble. You can do your kitchen for as little as $300. It's unbelievable, and right now, you can save even more. Use our coupon code, get it done, and take your honey-do list to honey done. Yep, sold. Pumped, pumped, pumped. Very excited about this project. There's high expectations for this first experience with epoxy. The objective is very simple. A gray table top, nothing fancy. Simple, simple, simple. If you're new here, please consider subscribing. The channel is about being let down by a contractor to being copacetic. In between those episodes, videos like this aimed at improving living situations. If the channel is not for you, maybe someone you know, please share. If you dislike, please hit the thumbs down. If you like, please hit the thumbs up or leave a comment. Thank you. After about 15 minutes, the tabletop was flipped over and what will be the table's top is being primed. It took six minutes to prime the underside of the table. The top took five minutes and one second. After priming, some imperfections were noted. These imperfections were then repaired. Spackle has been used to fill in any holes. If you're wondering, why is the primed surface being spackled or repaired? Well, the imperfections did not stand out until the surface was primed and it is not practical to sand the primer off. The spackle is being sanded down to be even with the tabletop surface. A second coat of primer was then added. And in summary, there is imperfection. Using spackle to fix the imperfection. The spackle came closer to perfection but is not perfection. Sanding fixed the spackle's imperfection and the primer made it perfect, achieving perfection. And now for the epoxy. Mixing the right amount is critical. This means having the dimensions of the table. Next, match the dimensions with the formula. This gives the precise amount of epoxy that is required. A container with a scale, say ounces, is recommended. More on this later. Mixing epoxy requires a drill. The mix time is right of two minutes. To determine the volume of epoxy, a scale is being used. This is in lieu of the recommended mixing container. Switching to these nitrite gloves, which will not allow chemicals such as epoxy to penetrate and burn the skin. Epoxy is a heavy chemical. There are no splashes. However, there is a technique to mix in. To achieve the desired color, a white base tint is added to the epoxy. It is not easy to pour the base tint from these jars. Yes, the jars were opened with the viewer in mind. The mix time was about a minute. Black base tint is now being added to the epoxy and the white base tint. This will create the gray look. The mixing continued until the epoxy was tinted pure gray. Not a hint of white, not a hint of black. There are a few things you're not seeing. For example, when I finished with the mixer, I cleaned it off. Now that the desired tint has been achieved, it is time to apply the epoxy to the table. 
The epoxies poured closer to the center. Not all the epoxy was used, just about half. Using a notched trowel, the epoxy was spread. This is to help have an even surface. There's a cycle. Add epoxy, spread. Add epoxy, spread. Add epoxy, spread. Over and over and over until full coverage is achieved. There's going to be some runoff over the edge. The edge also needs to have the epoxy to have a finished look. Chopping the surface will give us a very uniform finish. There's a recommended chop brush which was not used and there were consequences. The next thing, chopping should be random and not along lines. This process introduced a lot of bubbles into the finish. Consequences. Torch out any air bubbles that are remaining. A torch is recommended. Here, a heat gun is being used. It gets the job done in eight minutes, whereas a torch would have been under a minute. In addition, the heat gun shifts the epoxy. This is undesirable in this case. It may be desirable in other cases. The torch does not shift the epoxy. Next time, a chop brush and a torch will be used. There is some satisfaction in eliminating the bubbles. And done. All bubbles gone. Special attention needs to be paid to the edges. The epoxy ran down and cured. Ideally, these need to be removed before the epoxy cures. This situation can be corrected with a planer. Apologies for the image quality. With the legs back on, this is what the table looks like. You'll notice some imperfections on the top. Someone touched the spot. Also, the depth of color on the edge is not as pronounced as the top. Some additional work needed to be done there. Another step that was skipped is the application of a flood coat or a top coat. This project was meant to be an experiment, one which is successful. Thanks for watching. The day is one. Chin chin. <laughs> <laughs>